you may say, see a lot of us we believe that the Bible is just um, an illustration and it's a parable what God can do it's through parable so God had to wait Jesus had to wait till Lazarus will be dead and because to show us that he is the resurrection physically we would see with our eyes what God is gonna do at the last days but I don't think so Jesus was a part of his life amen Jesus knew that Lazarus is sick and he is dying Jesus came and resurrected him not because just to show that he is the resurrection and life yes he proved that up but also he came to him as to a friend amen also he came to him as to a friend because he is God so God is not using us like puppets to show what God can do and why and when we became his children many of us we don't even believe that God can do certain things because well it may happen to Peter and John and James but I don't know about me why not to you the Bible says this the Bible says this that he in verse uh, chapter 113 and verse 7 listen to me carefully God lifts the poor okay from the dust God can lift you up from the dust even today he wants to do that it's not a parable and it's not a funny story you cry out to God and out of my distress I cried out to him and he heard me amen why because God is always is the very present help in the time of my trouble the only thing God requires is to follow him trust him and live a holy life Leave sin away. Live the world away. A lot of people that are still half in the world, half in the church. Make a just cannot make a decision. But if you're gonna make a decision to follow Jesus, watch what is gonna happen in your life. He is going to bring you up because he said he sets, he lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dam. He sets them among princes, even the princes of his own people he gives children a uh, child is woman a family making you a happy mother so it's just a few examples what God can do but through these examples you see that God is here to empower us to bless us you know when you ask of God a wisdom Lord I don't know what to do what should I do God will never tell you I don't know because he knows but the Bible says clearly those who lack wisdom let them ask of God and he will give that with liberty uh, you need a direction the Bible already says that God directs the steps of the righteous man hallelujah Amen. So when you ask, God gives. He lifts people up from the bottom to the top. He gives you victory. He sets you free. That's the very reason why God has showed up on this world and gave Christ and died for our sins is to give us a victory. A lot of people in this world still don't understand this. They still don't have that relationship with God in those bases as who God is. Because they don't know what, what He said. Amen. When God becomes our sanctuary, when our life becomes God's sanctuary, 
when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when we know Christ, and when, when we are born again, when God is changing our life. I was talking to a man yesterday. I had to go and fix my car. And I was talking to a mechanic. And he was selling, telling me that uh, sometimes he would go to this church and that church, and he's looking for... Uh, 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 some kind of funny place that people will be laughing and act like clowns and be nice to each other. Some kind of a club that he would feel comfortable because he's a nice person himself, swears like a dog, but he's a nice man. <laughs> what can you do? He's, he's full in the world. I, 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 I understand that. I had to listen yesterday. I had to put my dark glasses on my eyes so that he wouldn't see the way I behave when he says something. And in half an hour he fixed my car, but in half an hour I received so many swears that I never heard for a while. I had to listen to this. But I understand. But he was saying that with fun. It was his language. That was his And he told me about his father, how hard he was working. And imagine every, every sentence had about five tenths words in it. So in any case, by the time he told me all the story, I heard enough of everything. And he says, I know that you are a pastor. After that he said. Well, he, he knew. I said, yes, I am. I have a church. I have a ministry. You know, I like you, he says. I said, okay. He said, give me your address and this, maybe I'll check it out. He says, what's the difference between this and this and that and this? What's the difference? I said, let me tell you what the difference is. In a few words, I'm not going to give you the whole gospel right now. But I'll tell you what the difference is. When God comes into your life, you are a different person. Oh, he says, Really? I said, yes, you will be absolutely different person. That's what makes people saved from their sin through the blood of Jesus. That they become new creation. No more swears, no more bad thoughts, no more fornication, no more money hungry. Blind becomes normal without stress. When there's no sin in your life, there's no stress. Everything becomes normal. I said, this is the difference. But he said, don't you have to go to Bible school? I said, no, you don't have to go to Bible school for that. Or you have to become a priest. I said, no, you don't have to become a priest. All you need is a born again experience with Christ. He says, I like you. And he swore. He says, give me your website. I said, there you go. I'll give you my website, you visit. I said, we are on television, you can watch us every morning. Oh, really? And he sweared. I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> and he told me how honest he is. Says, if you would go to another place for this job, you're going to pay $400. I charge you only 75 I said, I know, sir, I understand. I understand, that's okay. He's a good mechanic. But what is the difference between Christians? I said, there you, there you go. You're going to be a brand new man. Born again. Different person. Forgiven. Different person. A absolutely brand new man. And God will become your God. You're not going to be in charge of your life any longer. You wouldn't have no stress. Sleepless nights. God will teach you. You will learn not just obedience, but you will learn the trust. You will trust God in every situation. Amen. Then you'll be alright. That's where the difference is. Hallelujah. You see... The Bible says here, 
The Bible says here that he is our helper. He who fears God and walks in him, who trusts God, he is their help and their shield. I just want you to be encouraged today. I want you to understand that what God said, this is what is in your life. Live by it. Trust Him. And continue to plant your seeds of faith into what God said. Amen. It says in one in, in chapter one fifteen verse one, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your unfailing love and faithfulness. Imagine God has unfailing love and faithfulness. Some people will never, never, never accept Christ, denying Him always because they never, never want this kind of a change. They like to struggle. They like their environment. They like their sin environment. They like their world environment. They like to, you know, be where they are. Even if everything is falling apart and dying, but people like to stay way where they are. Amen. That's sad. People are not looking for anything better. But when the trouble comes, when the trouble comes and the trouble is going to come, it's going to be a tragic. Amen. The world, as the Bible says here in chapter 115, this life, silver and gold, and all kind of things, the trust upon their own strength and abilities. I'll tell you something else. There's nothing wrong with money. God has created money. You know that? There's nothing wrong with them. It's God's system. He has created. The Bible says silver and gold is mine. And everything that the world has. It's all mine. God has created for a purpose. There's nothing wrong to be a millionaire. There's nothing wrong to have money. There's nothing wrong... To, to have abundance. But the problem is that people, they trust. They trust in themselves. They make money their God. Amen. They trust in silver and gold. As it says, shaved by human hands. What that means is this. God says, I can bless you with everything that you can handle. Has no problems with this. But the way we achieve things, the way we trust, the way we live, and that's what God concerns. When people trust in their own strength, and the better job they're going to get, the more money they're going to get, and... Uh, they, tr they struggle, they, they, they do anything they possibly can to struggle through their life for the sake of silver and gold. And that's where God is having a problem. Amen. But when we begin to trust in God, God says, you come to me. I, I, I can direct your life. I can make your life better. I can make your life greater. You would not be corrupt. You would not be a liar. You would not do wrong things for the sake of gaining the same thing that I can give you. Are you listening? 
for the same thing, for the sake of everything that I want to bless you with, you don't have to do the corrupt way. I can give it to you through me, by trust in me. Amen. So we need to trust God. We are not in competition with the world. We are not in competition with the world. There's no competition in God's children. We quit competing. Jesus said, come to me, come to my rest. You are not competing. You came into my rest and your life depends on me. I can fulfill your goals and desires through me. When you trust in me. And moreover, I will lift you up and I will give you strength and I will help you to achieve everything you need. Not by might nor by power, but through my spirit. We are in agreement. My Holy Spirit is in agreement to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. God came to help the helpless. And I'll tell you, every person in this world is practically helpless. Amen. Because they trust upon themselves. And there's never, never things happen that done rightly when people trust upon their own strength and wisdom. It's always something. But God says, if you will make your life my sanctuary where I will dwell, my dominion, my kingdom will come into your life, and I will make things possible for you. The life becomes totally different. Hallelujah. Becomes powerful and God changes things. Glory to God. Precious God, Amen. Everything will move before you. And God is going to set you free from all things. Hallelujah. But the problem is, let me come to that moment right now. In chapter 115. See, the Holy Spirit is explaining about the idols in this world. Verse 2 says, Why let the nations say, Where is their God? Our God is in heaven, and He does as He wishes. And He says, Their idols are merely things of silver and gold, and so and so and so, and shaped by the hand. Anyway, it's, it's all scenario here. And when you see what it says... And from verse verse 5, 6, and 7, it explains everything the way God made men. Five senses and more. Senses and more. Speak, see, hear, smell, feel, walk, and sound. Amen. That's the things he speaks about. They look like they can help, but they cannot. It's important to understand that. They have mouth, they cannot speak. The eyes cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. And noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel. And feet but cannot walk. See? And throats but cannot make a sound. Look like a person. But helpless. But cannot do things. But the key of that is in verse 8. And those who make idols... Are just like them. As are all who trust in them. So here's the point. Here's the destiny of people that are not knowing God. Praise be to God. God is so good and His love and mercy and power endures forever. Well, (laughs) we trust in God. Amen. We just believe God for everything. See, religion is just um, something that uh, may encourage you to believe in God or something that is up there. But a relationship with God, a clear understanding of the Word of God, 
uh, the power, the anointing in your life will keep you there. Because the Bible says that God has anointed us. He has given us the anointing. And the anointing is the touch of the Spirit. It's when we have that uh, close relationship with God. And when we have a close relationship with our Father, our God, we know through His Word and by His Spirit that He's going to be looking after us. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what we're going through. We know that He's going to look after us. He's going to be looking after us. He's going to touch our life. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus said, not just in general to people in this world, because He was so good to everybody. No, He said to those who will be born again it, through, uh, through His blood. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So, trust in Him. Jesus is the Savior. Amen. And it's only through Him you can uh, have connection with God. And God is going to bless you and touch your life. You know, you need to be sold out to God. God wants us as His children to be sold out to Him and trust Him upon everything and with everything. Amen. You know, we're all going through certain things every day. Every day we're going through certain things because we live by faith. Every believer, you understand this or not, but is called to live by faith in God. See, it's not our own strength anymore. When we received Christ, Jesus says, well, you now is not alone. You are not alone. Your life is not your life anymore. It's the life that it's your life is my life now. And the life that I live in this flesh, as the Bible says, I live by the faith of Jesus. Amen. So our life became a life of faith. This is why sometimes we don't know what to do because we're facing some situations and problems and decisions that we have to make because we want to live the righteous life. And yet, if we don't know how to live by faith, we are in a balance. That's, but God says, trust me. Trust me, trust me. Whatever you're going through, just trust me. And I will be there for you. Learn to trust God. How many times God says, trust, trust upon the Lord. Those who trust upon the Lord, God shall renew their strength. God is going to renew their strength, but God wants us to trust Him because we have a different life. We have a life in Christ. We're going against the stream of this life, against the passions and, and sin and all demands that people demand in today in this life just to please their flesh. We're going against this. This is why it's so difficult. But trust God and you will win every battle. Well, we're coming to the end of this program. And if you need an additional prayer, give us a call. I will be praying with you. But remember, uh, this uh, um, in August, I'm going to be in um, Thunder Bay, Ontario for two nights of miracle meetings. And that will be at Elks Lodge, uh, 201 Syndicate Avenue North, Thunder Bay, Ontario, August 26th, 27th. Uh, Friday night at 7 p.m., Saturday night at 6 p.m. And I'm sure God is going to bring a lot of blessings and power and glory and miracles there. So come. And in Saskatoon, I'll be in the middle of September, uh, uh, 6th and 17th and 18th, for his uh, brother Ray Martel's um, the River Life um, Ministry Annual Conference. I'll be one of the guest speakers. So if you want to join us there, give them a call. And Possibly I will be in Winnipeg uh, right after his conference. But stay tuned. Stay tuned for this information. Well, God is good. God loves you. God has the power to overcome everything in your life. Just trust Him and be faithful. Thank you for watching today. And until tomorrow, be blessed. Shalom. Love to see you glorified 
to see you lifted high. I earn to see all nations bow beneath. It's you alone, Lord Jesus, who can cause the coldest heart to find your love and everlasting. Find your love in everlasting peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.